guys, VP Mangaka here. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience getting my Manga Yield Treehouse uploaded on three major digital comic platforms. I learned a lot through this process and I also learned which platforms have a little bit more to offer than others. So maybe you'll find this video helpful if you are not only uploading your own work to a digital platform, but if you're a reader and trying to figure out maybe which platform is for you. I'm also going to rank what I think is the worst to the best, particularly if you are a manga reader or a manga creator. I have a lot to say about some platforms in particular, so let's jump in. First, I'm going to start with Webtoon. To be clear, I knew going in with Webtoon that Yule Trios is not a Webtoon. It is a traditional right to left manga, it's monochromatic, it is not vertical scroll panel to panel, so I had the understanding that Webtoon is really not the platform for this style of comic. That's not to say that you can't upload your comic on Webtoon, obviously it has one of the largest reader bases for digital comic platforms on the web, so you should get it out there just to get more readers. But it's not really designed for the kind of comic that my work, Yield Treehouse, is and many of you who are making manga. It's really not for us, so to speak. So first, my experience with Webtoon was it was very overwhelming. It was a little confusing to figure out how to get my creator profile up and running and exactly when I would be able to put a profile picture. I know it sounds absolutely stupid, but I could not figure out how to get a profile picture for the longest time. There's really no guidance with regard to that at all. My Manga Yellow Tree House is over 50 pages and it's a very big, it's very big. One platform I struggled with the most getting this comic uploaded was Webtoon. There was just so much friction along the way for a manga style comic. The first thing for me was the need to have a horizontal and a vertical thumbnail. Now you may think, well oh, Fifi, what do you expect? You have to make these digital assets when you want to get your book up on a digital platform and I totally get that and I totally understand that. But I found myself having to create entirely new assets just for this need to have a horizontal and a vertical thumbnail for the webtoon platform which was very irritating having just finished 50 pages of a manga. So I went and drew my thumbnails for my horizontal and my vertical and webtoon is so particular about the sizing and the aspect ratio. It took me several little juggles of a try to get it just right so that the platform was happy and not yelling at me when I tried to upload them. Once I got it uploaded, I realized that per episode on Webtoon, you only have about 20 megabytes of memory for your episode. So when I read Webtoon just for leisure as a reader, I would always wonder why these episodes are so short. And the reason is because they don't give you much space to work with to get an episode up there. So seeing as though I had 50 pages of a manga, clearly I was not hitting the 20 megabyte limit. I was surpassing it and I only was able to upload about 32 pages of my 50 page manga. I went back and re-exported the old treehouse in the lowest file settings that I was satisfied with that I didn't want to drop any lower and I was able to upload the full 50 pages that way. So for me this was the first big killer for Webtoon. I want a reading experience to be as it is when I'm drawing it. I don't want my readers to see a subpar quality of my work than what I'm seeing on my end. So I feel like for the style of comic, the manga style that I'm doing, that quality reduction for big chapters is a very significant con. So consider this if you have a larger work like a manga where a chapter, particularly your first chapter is going to be, you know, it could be anywhere from 30 to 60 pages as opposed to maybe like a four or five page webtoon where you may not have this issue in, you know, reduction of the quality of each image. So I had to especially export my comic just for webtoon in lower settings just to be able to get it up there. So I was really not satisfied with that at all. The next part of my webtoon experience that I noticed, and this is something Thing that's kind of both a reader and a creator issue that I feel about Webtoon is the way that Webtoon delineates the different categories. You can tell there are definitely preferences for certain genres on the platform and other genres are kind of like relegated to the background area. So they're kind of like creating what they want you to read on the platform. But if you're considering hosting your manga there, keep in mind that it's really not a platform for monochromatic comics. It's not the priority for the readers on that platform. While that's less of, you know, a webtoon, you know, it's their fault sort of thing. It's just something that I think is 
interesting that they don't really make space for anything besides this very, very specific type of comic. Not even just the way it's drawn, but genres too, like aka romance, for example. <laughs> Ultimately, my upload experience with Webtoon was filled with friction. I had to upload my vertical thumbnail so many times, my horizontal thumbnail so many times before it was satisfied with the aspect ratio of the quality. It reduced the quality of my pages significantly. It was just not the platform for my manga. So I'm gonna have to rank Webtoon completely on the bottom in my upload experience. Okay, let's move on to the second platform that I worked with, which is Manga Plus Creator. So all of my manga peeps out there, you know this platform. This is the one and only platform that caters specifically to us manga authors and manga readers. It is a derivative of Manga Plus, which is where all of the sensei posts and publish their work. And it was the one I was the most excited to get Yield Treehouse up on, but it also wasn't the most impressive, I have to be honest. So when uploading to Manga Plus, the first thing that really annoyed me that I realized was there is no drag and drop mechanism for my page. There was no ability for me to change the order of my pages very easily. So if I had to make a correction to a page, I had to click the right button or the left button several times to get that page up to where it needed to be, which you already can understand how absolutely frustrating that is. I thankfully only had to do it once, but the fact that there's no easier mechanism to shift pages around is just, it's just utterly beyond me. Another thing that I found that was a bit irritating about Manga Plus Creators was there's this little panel on the side. There's a couple of check green check marks, things like the page size and the page layout. And it's, it says you get more bonus points for the monthly rankings, depending on how many green checks that you get. So I was just a little weirded out by that. You know, I have this particular format in mind for how I would like to upload Yield Treehouse, but the upload flow, it makes me feel pressure to upload the way they want me to upload it, even if it's not really the most frictionless way for my readers. You know, I want to see those green checks getting checked. So I want to do it exactly as they're saying, but that might not be the best way to upload my comic for my readers. So that was something that I felt was a bit odd. And I also didn't quite understand how that affected the monthly rankings because the website says that the monthly rankings are determined by the engagement and interaction with the work. So that was a bit weird. Additionally, I also had to export my project in a lower file type, but not as low as Webtoon, which was, thank goodness, I did not want to reduce my quality any more than I had to. And thankfully, Manga Plus was much better than Webtoon on this front. I also like the fact that Manga Plus gives you your own little author page and you get to add your social links and things like that, which is pretty nice. Webtoon is very aggressive about what links you can put where. There was actually some controversy just a couple days ago about the Patreon button disappearing. I hear it's back. But anyway, it's hard pressed to be able to find a platform that allows you to promote yourself with your social links. So I was happy that Manga Plus was one of those that did. One last con I would say for Manga Plus is that I didn't have any control over how my cover showed. Once I uploaded my cover, they cropped it wherever they wanted to and didn't give me the ability to kind of change the placement of how my cover appears. And I've been publishing books for years and I know as much as we wish it weren't true, readers absolutely judge a book by that cover within like five seconds of seeing it. So the placement, particularly when your book is lined up with several other books, is so important for how someone perceives your work. So I was a bit disappointed that I couldn't really adjust that. Hopefully that's something that they can consider changing or adding in the future, who knows. Overall, I would place Manga Plus Creators above Webtoon, but still not at the top. The digital comic platform that I would absolutely not hesitate to put at the top from my experience is Global Comics. I particularly think global comics completely destroys the competition with digital comics and it is not even close. I can give my feedback in terms of having been an engineer right on down to the reader experience and the creator experience. Everything is done meticulously for the happy path of the consumer. And let me give you a primary example. When I was uploading my comic pages to Global Comics, I did not have to re-export and change the file size at all. They let me put my giant comic on there and did not tell me, Fifi, you're crazy, please drop this down to like, you know, I don't know, one DPI. They let me put it 
as I saw it on my Clip Studio program. And I was so happy that my comic looked so pretty and crisp and clear as it looks for me locally on my computer. When it came to changing page orders or anything like that, you can drag and drop. You can use your drag tool on your mouse to move the pages around. You don't have to do this weird clicking thing. You can just drag what you want and put it where you want, which I was just like, thank goodness. You would think this is something that's like easy and expected, but it's apparently not. But on Global Comics, you can do that. It's so simple to do that. Another thing, you can schedule your releases. Now, scheduling releases is a feature that Webtoon has. Manga Plus Creators does not have a scheduling feature, but if you know, you know, it's one such feature that is like a must have and Global Comics makes it very easy for you to schedule your chapters so that you don't have to hover around your computer when you're ready to release that chapter. Let's talk about the author page. On Global Comics, your creator page with your work is so prominent and nice looking. Your entire cover shows your author's name, your blurb, everything is just very prominent and it gives the reader exactly the information that they need to decide whether or not this is something that they want to read. There's a lot of thought and care put into both experiences for the creator and for the reader. And it really shows in the decision making with the layout of the website. And unfortunately, I uploaded Yield Trails to Global Comics first, so I just kind of went down in experience. It went from really good to really bad. But nonetheless, I was so certain that my platform going forward is going to be Global Comics just because of how the ease of that uploading experience is. And then I use the app religiously. The app is just designed for comic readers. It's, it's a really great experience and I'm like so excited to continue uploading my manga on this platform. So if you're trying to figure out which platform to use, long story short, my recommendation if you are a manga creator is Global Comics. Webtoons absolutely works on Global Comics too. But for us manga creators, Webtoon may not be the best place. So I really think Global Comics is the way forward for digital publishing for your comic series. Check it out. Even if you're not publishing anything, you just like to read comics. The app is beautiful. Like the navigation, it's seamless. It's just very easy to use and it's a quite nice app. And I used to design apps and code them. So <laughs> I think I have a pretty good experience on what makes a good user experience for applications. Okay, that's about it for my uploading experience for my Manga Yule Treehouse. I used three platforms, Webtoon, Manga Plus Creators, and Global Comics, and I found Global Comics to be the absolute best by a long shot. And I hope that you look into it and see if it's right for you, because I know for sure it's right for me. Now that I'm done with chapter one, I am currently in the process of storyboarding for chapter two of the old treehouse. So a lot of the videos on the channel are gonna focus around my experience around that. It's gonna be a lot more vlog style. I know a lot of you guys are here for writing advice and writing tips and some of those videos on like power systems and things. And I will definitely still do that. But because I'm now knee deep in manga making, a lot of the content is going to revolve around that because I would really like to document my journey of basically trying to create the next One Piece. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So if that's interesting to you, stick around and I promise you there'll be more content like this coming forward. I will see you later. Bye.